Hello, we're working a problem today and I'm kind of stuck. And so we're going to talk about one way that we can get ourselves unstuck in this equilibrium problem. Here's the problem. We've got a structure as shown here. And member ABC connected by member BD. You see the dimensions and you see that we've got a couple of loads on that member. And we're asked to find the reactions at A and D. At first glance, this looks like a basic equilibrium problem that we've already been solving several times. So we're comfortable with our equations of equilibrium. And so I know that the first thing I'm going to do is draw that free body diagram from which I'm going to write my equations of equilibrium. And so that's what I did here. I got my free body diagram of the entire structure. I knew that at A, it's a pin, so it's got two reactions, one in the X and one in the Y direction. At D, it's a pin, so it's also got two reactions, one in the X and one in the Y. And I count up the number of unknowns, four, and I know that I've only got three equations of equilibrium. So it looks like this problem is unsolvable. But then I just remembered something that my instructor had told me about these two force members and the power that could be involved in identifying a two force member. Knowing that a two force member is connected at its ends by pins. That it only has loads applied or reactions only at these ends. And there are no applied moments. So remembering those criteria to define a two-force member, I go back to my structure and I notice that member BD is a member that is connected at its ends by pins. It has no loads applied anywhere along the length except these reactions at B and D at those ends, those pins. And there are no applied moments to that member, which means it's a two-force member, which has the power to make an unsolvable problem suddenly solvable. How so? Let's dig in and see. So, so the, the basic process of frame analysis, we pull the pins and we draw free body diagrams of these individual members. So we'll do that. Free body diagram of member ABC. So we're going to isolate ABC from its surroundings. And we know that here at A, we're going to have an X and a Y component. And now at B, we would originally have said we're going to have an X and a Y component, but we now know that member BD is a two-force member. And so we know that it's going to have a force acting along the direction of its axis. And which direction is it going to be pointing? Is it going to be pushing back on ABC or pulling ABC? Eh, it doesn't really matter because the math will tell us, although we can probably look at this problem and say, well, it's going to be pushing back on member ABC. So let's just draw it that way. And we'll call this the force in member BD. Now to make this a complete free body diagram, we need to add these other forces, the 75 pound force and the 100 pound force. Of course, to make it a complete free body diagram, we need to make sure that we include all the dimensions. So this distance is four feet. This distance is four feet. And we need to include the slope. And we know that this is three to four. So that's the slope of the member, which means the slope of the force is the same because it's running along the axis of that two force member. So there's our free body diagram of member ABC. And of course, I'm not quite complete. You've probably noticed I'm missing this dimension feet, and I'm missing one more thing to make it a complete free body diagram. The coordinate axis system. There we go. X, Y, my clock, our counterclockwise moment is going to be positive. Now we've got a complete free body diagram. So count up the number of unknowns. Three. How many equations of equilibrium for this structure? Three. So it's now solvable.
So we've taken the un out of unsolvable, and we can go ahead and build our equations of equilibrium to solve for these unknown values. And we're gonna apply the same equations of equilibrium that we've been applying in other equilibrium problems. And we can start with the most powerful equation of equilibrium, the summation of moments. We can pick a point that's gonna be the most easy for us to calculate moments about. I suggest moments about point B. So if we sum the moments about point B, we know they're gonna be equal to zero. We'll note that this is our, clock, our counterclockwise positive direction. Summing moments about point B, I've got this AY value, which is not known, but will be soon, times four feet. That's its perpendicular distance between AY and point B. It's wanting to rotate the body this direction, clockwise, which means this is a negative moment. The next force I come into contact with is a 75 pound force. It's at a distance of two feet away from point B, and that's gonna to wanna to rotate about point B counterclockwise, so that's a positive moment. The force BD doesn't have a moment, or doesn't create a moment about point B because its line of action passes through that point, so there's no perpendicular distance. And we're left with this 100 pound force out here, and that's a distance of four feet away, and that's gonna to wanna to rotate the body clockwise, meaning that's a negative value. Only one equation, or only one unknown in that equation. So we solve for this force AY. That comes out to be 62.5 units or pounds. And it comes out to be negative, which means what about our answer? It only means that we have drawn it in the wrong direction on our free body diagram. So in reality, AY is 62.5 pounds down. When we're asked to calculate reactions at A and D, looks like we've calculated one of the reactions at A. And we'll double underline that, A and S. All right, so we got one of the three unknowns. Picking up the pace in order to solve for the other two unknowns. Next equation of equilibrium is going to be summing forces in the y direction. Equal to zero, up is positive. We've got AY in the up direction on our free body diagram. We've got 75 pounds down on our free body diagram. We've got three fifths of whatever this force BD is, and that's in the up direction on our free body diagram. So I get the plus minus a 100 pound force out here. We calculated AY, so we've got to substitute that in, but we've got to avoid or be careful about the sign. We calculated the value of negative 62.5 pounds based on this sign convention, or this, this assumed direction pointing up. We just built this equation based on that same direction pointing up. So when we substitute the value in for this variable, we need to substitute it as negative 62.5 pounds. And now the only unknown in this equation is this force BD. So we run through the math, and we get that the force BD is 396 pounds. Now the assumed direction is correct. It comes out positive, which means this member BD is pushing up on this structure, which means the structure is pushing back on member BD. So if we were to draw a quick free body diagram of member BD, it means that the force of 396 pounds at this point D is, or B is pushing back, which means what's going to have to be down here? Equal and opposite pushing the other direction. So that's also 396 pounds, which means this two force member is in tension or compression. It's being squeezed on both ends, it's in compression. And we'll note that with a compression right there. Now we weren't necessarily asked to calculate the force in that member, so we're gonna to have to talk about how to report that as a reaction, which means what's happening down here at point D? Well, at point D, that's this right here. So we've got 396, we could rewrite this as the reaction at D, so this is just the reaction at D is equal to 396 pounds and it's at a certain direction. So we could calculate the angle. 
using trigonometry and a three, four, five triangle, or we could write it with a slope, where this is a three and this is a four. And we now have a complete answer, magnitude, direction, point of application, and units for the reaction at D. And then finally, we need to sum forces in the x direction. So the right is positive, we'll make that assumption. We've got AX pointed in the right direction. We've got four fifths of the force in BD also pointed to the right, so that's positive. And there's nothing else. We substitute in the value of 396 pounds for the force in BD, and we see that the force, reaction force at A in the X direction is 317 pounds. It's negative though. So that means that it's actually 317 pounds opposite of what we had assumed up here. So it's to the right. And so there it is, folks. The power of the two force member to take an unsolvable problem with too many unknowns and make it solvable using the three equations of equilibrium. I hope this helped. I hope you see the power of the two force member and I wish you the best of success in solving your problems uh, involving two force members here in the future.